Miami Dolphins have cut Mario Williams, Brandon Albert, and uh, Earl Mitchell. We've got some, this, this is amazing news for a lot of different reasons. I think we should start with Brandon Albert. There's been a lot of speculation about Brandon Albert uh, and, where, and, again, where the mindset of this Dolphins organization is. And I think we got a clear answer to that. Uh, so let's get into why Brandon Albert was cut. Now I've been a huge advocate of this. I thought I, this was. I remember we. This has been speculation for a long time, and this is idea has been thrown around, especially how the market is right now, with how deep it is at the guard position and free agency. It is so deep this year, uh, and if you could get even one of those guys, it could be a, an above average starting guard in the NFL. You guys pay him a lot of money. Now this is the this is the upside to the Brandon Albert cut. Now this is why I like the Brandon Albert cut. Number one, he was at the tail end of his career. You saw that. I mean, you saw Melvin Ingram, who probably he gets outweighed by Melvin Ingram. Brandon Albert outweighs him by like 100 pounds almost. Uh, Melvin Ingram just basically pushes him to the ground. He lost his athleticism. Uh, he's not the a- the athletic left tackle that we've seen even in Dolphins history, for God's sakes. Even I mean, you go back to Chiefs, if Chiefs when he was with the Chiefs, it's not even close. He's just not the same player. Not only that, but he was not there on a consistent basis. He barely ever played 100% on the Miami Dolphins. When he was playing, he was like 80%, probably not even that. So he was a liability for depth issues. He was not consistently uh, there. He was constantly being injured. The same problems that he had with uh, Kansas City, we inherited here in, in Miami. And it hurt us so many years when we had Brandon Albert. It caused so many depth issues. We lost a lot of games. We lost the, the most, I guess the most recent one was against Tennessee when we lost him. We also lost Larry that game, but that was a crazy. He slipped in the shot. It was a crazy accident. But you know, this is this is such to get rid of that, to get rid of the the inconsistencies there, to get rid of, especially now that he's he's definitely he's way out of us. He's definitely beyond at the end of his prime. I don't think he's gonna have. He's not gonna give you a full 16 game season for the rest of his, for the rest of his career. I don't think that's ever gonna happen again with Brandon Albert. Now, when you look at the bad side to this. Uh, and when I was talking about this before, this was you know I was we were talking about this throwing this idea around uh, if uh, Brand Albert should be cut. The the argument for Dolphins fans once against it is just it's like it just adds more problems. Uh, you cut Brandon Albert now you gotta go get a guard. And Jermon Bushrod over here is still a huge question mark. Now Jermon has said that he's not retiring, but Jermon Bushrod obviously probably by far the weakest link on that offensive line. So you've got two question marks now at both guard positions. You got one player who's at clearly out of his prime. You got another guard position now that we're gonna have to fill now that Brandon Albert's cut and we're kicking Larry Me back out to left tackle. Uh, and that's a problem now because not not only that because we have to we have to now worry about those two positions. Now we have to worry about. Linebacker, we this is, should be our number one priority is defense. Obviously, the last year's Dolphins defense was the worst we've ever seen in a Dolphins uniform, statistically by far the worst. Now we have to worry about uh, linebackers, depth at you know depth in the secondary, uh, and depth at the defensive line. Not really depth of the secondary. I'm not really worried about, but depth of defensive line, depth of linebackers, and getting new a whole new linebacker core. That costs if if I think we're gonna who knows if we're gonna do it through the draft or through free agency but there was a report that the Dolphins are going to target defensive ends at free agency so either you're going to spend a lot of money uh, in free agency to get a defensive end, a starting caliber defensive end, or re-signing Andre Branch. Uh, not only that, but I totally forgot about this. We have to worry about getting Kenny back, who it looks like people are going to be throwing number one uh, wide receiver money at. So now that you have to worry about that. Now, I understand that argument, and it's a very valid one, and, I under- and I'm concerned about it also, because now we have to worry about another position to fill, which is just, it, it's sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's a bad thing. I think in this case, it's a good thing, because... Brandon Albert caused so many problems during the NFL season. It's crazy. I mean, so many problems. He's not, he wasn't ever consistently there. Like I've, I've already said, you know, he wasn't consistently there. Didn't play 100. percent I really think we. I think we've got the 100 percent Brandon Albert. Maybe three or four times in his career. Maybe. You know what I mean? So this is a great. I love the move. I I, I personally love it, and I could. I totally understand the argument against it. And it's a very, it's, it is a hundred percent a concern for me, and it should be concern for all Dolphins fans of how, because this is even a now this, this just adds to the list of needs, uh, and then the the, the crap in to do list just got bigger. Now again, so going into deeper detail detail in this, who's going to be replacing him? Now this is another factor that we have to factor in in cutting Brandon Albert. Laramie Tunsil comes into the NFL, uh, obviously that unfortunate skid uh he's out of position playing left guard uh 
uh, he's just, you know, not as obviously not his real position. He wins AFC East Rookie of the Year. He makes all at, rookie team uh, probably, at, n not probably, everywhere you look, doesn't matter what site you pro football focus, NFL.com, he makes them all. He makes all rookie team, not even playing his natural position. Name me another rookie. Now it could be, uh, could be spacing out on this who did that this year and i don't think anybody did that so you move now we get to kick him out to his natural position now there there is uh you know rumblings in the organization that uh whoever i don't know whether it be chris Greer, adam or mike they had said that laramie has, has the hall he has hall of fame caliber talent which we already knew this so that factors into the brandon uh cutting brandon albert also and Dolphins fans were getting upset. I remember a lot during the season, or actually training camp last year, when you watched them <clears throat> play, Laramie was clear, clear, clearly the better uh, uh, left tackle, uh, especially in, towards the end of training camp. Um, so, and you know, Laramie struggled in training camp uh, to be, at the beginning of training camp uh, with the physicality of playing guard. Now he's going to be moved back to his natural position. Not only that, but he learned to be physical, and some of the knock on Laramie. Uh, the knock on Laramie coming out of college was is he's not a very elite run blocker. He has become that, and he's going to take what he learned from the guard position over to left tackle. So, in a way, Brandon Albert made Laramie a whole lot better than he was, uh, and this really spiked up his development. So, this is an all-around great, and I listen, it's an all-around great move for the Dolphins organization and in past regimes we would have he would have been the starting left tackle this upcoming season and it would have caused so many problems uh for us that season uh so this is just a great move by the Miami Dolphins uh and I I I, I completely support it so let's move on to uh, Mario Williams how this one's a whole lot easier this one's a whole lot easier to take right there's no real argument you can make for Mario Williams for him to stay. Now, a lot of people, I see a lot of people saying, oh, well, this is just the result of a terrible move by the Miami Dolphins. Were we taking a chance on Mario Williams? Yes, but you got to understand the thought process in Mario Williams. Mario Williams was in a 3-4 system with Rex Ryan, where he was basically using him as like a tweener guy between linebacker and defensive end, which was the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And Mario Williams obviously is a 4-3 guy, hand in the dirt, don't stand him up type of a defensive end. So... Knowing that, and he got five sacks in that system, uh, obviously he was two seasons or I think a season removed from an all-pro season, uh, first team all-pro I think with 14 sacks. You bring him over here not only because of his pass rush ability, but because of his run stuff ability. He's a very, 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 I mean in his prime was probably the best two-way defensive end in the NFL. I think, I mean, it's, it's insane. He's always, he's always been that, you know, that. So we thought we could get that back again, going back to the argument of, you know, signing a player for... Uh, the past, not the present, which is never a good thing to do. A lot of teams fall into that trap. Uh, so, yeah, I, I don't think it was a bad move because we knew that he was coming back to a 4-3 system, back to the wide nine under Vance Joseph. I think we could, I think, because there was no evidence against the fact that he couldn't do that, uh, coming back to his natural uh, scheme. So I don't think it was ever a bad move. I, I think it was a low-risk, high-reward type of a, a deal there. But I'm glad he's gone because obviously he was overweight all season. It really didn't seem like he was trying too hard. Obviously, he was t constantly complaining about how he was injured. Now, that's true, but he was he was severely overweight. I think he was like 300 pounds at one point during the season at defensive end, which is disgusting. Uh, and, yeah, that we just needed to uh, not, not have that on our football team anymore. Uh, and moving on to Earl Mitchell. Now, Earl Mitchell is less of a clean-cut kind of like, oh, this guy, you know, what I know his injury problems, and he's been injury-prone since we we signed him from Houston. Uh, but Earl has, a, Earl has a very special talent in the NFL. He's a very good pass rusher. He's a very good defensive uh, run stuffer. Uh, he, is, he is a very good two-way defensive tackle. Uh, now, is he a three-down guy? No. Is he a limited snap count guy? Yes. Is he is he somebody using your pass rush package? Absolutely. I think I think if we I, th I wish we in a perfect world in a perfect world, I wish we kind of could have renegotiated uh, renegotiated his deal because I think Earl still has that. We saw flashes of that last season. He had some insane freak athlete plays last season, and I think if you use him in a limited snap count like Dwight like a Dwight Freeney, and he's young too. He's not. I mean, he's way younger Dwight Freeney. Uh, and like a James Harrison, James Harrison less of a snap. I mean, he he still gets a lot of snaps, but even less than uh, James, uh, James Harrison. I think he could be very successful in the NFL. Uh, that one's a less of a clean cut, but I completely understand why we cut him. I know that he's been injury prone. 
He's never, he's kind of the same thing like Brandon Albert. Never really played 100% healthy. I think we saw that a little bit last season and some of the freakish plays that he made. But I, I completely understand it. But all around, I think these are great moves by the Miami Dolphins. Again, it shows you what, how rational this organization, this organization is compared to like the Dennis Hickey regime, the Jeff Iron, uh, Jeff Ireland uh, regime, excuse me. Completely different. It's refreshing to see that we got out from under the truck before the truck hits us in the face basically because this would have this would have caused so many problems next season i'm glad we got rid of him now so that is going to be it guys i am skyx 83 and i will see you guys in the next one